Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at the new iOS 4. So we're still a few days away from the iPhone 4 being released, but we have the new operating system. So let's take a look at the new iOS 4 running on the iPhone 3GS. So the first thing I noticed is a change of the default background image, uh, the wallpaper, and you can set that separately for the lock screen and for the wallpaper behind the apps, just like on the iPad. Now the big new feature is multitasking. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have a bunch of apps running. So let's run Safari there. Let's run another app, say uh, the calendar, and let's run the weather app. And once you have all these running, the way to access multitasking is to quickly double tap the home button. And that brings up this multitasking interface here, which shows you all the apps that happen to be running at the time in the background. And to switch to any one of them, you just tap it. And it flips out like that. Double tap again, and you can switch to another one. Now, a big problem on other phones that support multitasking is getting these to quit. Doing it here on the iPhone, what you do is you, you tap and hold on any one of these apps, and they shake, just like you're going to move them around, but you have this little minus symbol. So you can quit any app running in the background just by tapping the minus symbol next to it. So app folders is another uh, big improvement in iOS 4. So say you want to put a bunch of apps together in a folder. The first thing you need to do is to tap and hold just like you're going to move the icons around and they'll sort of jiggle like that. And you decide which ones you're going to move together. So let's move the stocks and weather apps together and you do that just by dragging one on top of the other. And it will enlarge, you drop it in there and it will give you a name and, and it will try to guess what kind of name you want for it. So uh, we'll leave it as the default name or you can change it there. And then we can tap on the screen and we have this black box icon that contains really tiny versions of those apps there. We can drag other apps that we want into them. So right, so drag this one in here, just drop it in. And then you can stabilize by pressing the home button again. And now we have three apps in there. If I tap it, it gives me this little menu here of the apps that are inside and I can choose which one it is that I want to run. So there are other improvements to the default apps. For instance, here we are in Mail. You can notice at the top the name of the mailbox is all mailboxes because you get to select either one of your mailboxes, one of your email accounts, or a screen that will show you all of the incoming messages for all your mailboxes, which is nice. Other new features include in the camera app, you've got the ability to zoom in and the way you do that is you tap, double tap on the screen and it brings out this little slider here and you can zoom in. And it's a digital zoom but it could be useful. In the iPod app under playlist there's an add playlist and you can create a new playlist and it works just like it does on the iPad. You can add different songs by just pressing the plus button there and edit them in various different ways. Under preferences, there are some new things you can do. For instance, you can set wallpapers for both the lock screen and behind your apps. Uh, under Safari, you can now choose Bing as an additional search engine there. So you can also add keyboards under Bluetooth keyboard here. You can select one, like say one of the Apple wireless keyboards, and then use that to type just like you can on the iPad. So to get iOS 4, all you need to do is sync your iPhone with your Mac or PC, have iTunes running, go to the summary screen for that iPhone and look under version and there's a button for check for update. And this should find the new iOS 4 and give you the opportunity to install it. Now iOS 4 only works on the 3G, 3GS and the new iPhone 4. Now on the 3G there's a much slower processor and Apple has disabled a lot of things such as multitasking in the new iOS 4. As a matter of fact some people are suggesting that you don't even get iOS 4 for the 3G. Just stick with the iPhone OS 3.0 and of course you're going to be forced to do the same if you have the original iPhone as well. So I hope you like this look at the new iOS 4. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.